And why I'm saying that, maybe, maybe uh, I can just start with a small example. Uh, those who have watched this small film on Netflix, The Sleep, uh, Abhishek Bachchan's recent film. Uh, and in that film, you'll find that this film is about education. Uh, it, 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 the film suggested that somewhere, um, because of the lack of education, uh, though they have political power, uh, but they do not have that kind of a consciousness or ethical values that required to run a better, uh, a better political society. Uh, that was the kind of an imprint. And it was suggested that without that formal education, uh, making sense of a good society is a, such a difficult task. And therefore, uh, making that even the, the, the politically, what they what the call dominant caste, like uh, the, the film is about the dark leader in, in uh, an imaginary state called Harit Pradesh, where he is not an educated person, and they, that's why it makes some big mistakes in life. Uh, so already there is a kind of a sense, but what I am trying to suggest is when they are speaking about education and the relationship of political class in today's time, they are forgetting that this idea is basically implemented, executed, imagined somewhere at the first time by by Jyoti Bhakti, by Mahatma Jyoti Bhakti, uh, that link between education and knowledge, that link between education, knowledge and consciousness, that link was one of the, the, the first thinker who thought about this line was of course Jyoti Bhakti, and you will find that this film is simply missing that point. Nowhere uh, in that film that particular relationship is maintained. At the climax of the film, the end of the film, you will find that somewhere uh, they quote Nelson, Nelson Mandela, of course a great, very great and a revolutionary figure, but they remember that somebody called Nelson Mandela has spoken about education and the political consciousness, but they forget their own indigenous icon, uh, which was very much part of the, uh, of the history. And therefore the, 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 the kind of, uh, what you call, the, the missing of the history, that they miss the history completely. Uh, mainly the ruling classes today. And I was also thinking that it is not only the ruling classes that has no sense of history today, uh, but also just, uh, just see the, what you call the recent farmers' protest uh, based on against the three agricultural laws. Such a impressive protest in the North India, mainly Punjab, UP, were galvanized by that huge protest against the system, against the establishment and suggested that somewhere a roaring, a very, very impressive farmers movement is taking place and it will have a significant impact on what they call uh, the coming political system. Uh, that was the kind of a hope and assumption. But when it comes to the elections later on, uh, what happens to that, what we call impressive mobilizations of the farming caste, uh, you'll find that mainly in Uttar Pradesh, uh, the, the assumption that the grieving farmers, the, the oppressed or the suffering farmers will, will desert the BJP, will not stand with the BJP and will vote for what they call a very, very significant opposition that is coming up, mainly the Samarwadi party and the Rashi Lokdal opposition, the SPRLD opposition, uh, that the farming caste will stand with them and uh, uh, kind of rewrite the, the, uh, what they call the arrival of the social justice movement or the movement based on farmers' rights. This idea was there before the election. But what happened at the end, we know uh, that only in some constituencies, the, uh, the farming communities, mainly the Gujars or the Jats, sided with the, uh, with the opposition, but in more majority of the seats, you will find that the BGP retained its domination or or uh, this uh, farming caste. And this somewhere suggests us something very, very unique about the current consciousness of the farming communities also, the larger uh, democratization or the social awareness or the consciousness that are there with the oppressed and deprived communities. Uh, why I'm raising this particular point? Uh, because if you read uh, Fule's work, uh, you will find that he is not simply considering or kind of concentrating on one single or small issue. The interconnectivity, the overlap with multiple issues, uh, with multiple issues related to the oppressed and the marginalized communities. That idea that uh, for a uh, social revolution, uh, for a kind of a conscious building of a society, for the for what you call making a path where the Bali Raja will walk and build a, a better society. Uh, for that kind of imagination, uh, just a small or uh, a kind of a uh, narrow understanding of social evolution will not be enough. You need to connect with multiple marginalized people and that connectivity will create 
and awareness about the social uh, so, uh, social evolution. This idea was kind of a bedrock of a fullest work. And we'll find that in the current state, where the farmers, farmers are absolutely showing that their capacity and courage to challenge the political establishment, but we'll find that somewhere the narrowness of that particular uh, uh, particular movement, like for that matter, challenging the government's, uh, government uh, on the, the, the three, three farm laws, uh, four farm laws, but missing the point about the agrarian crisis in general. Like agrarian crisis, not only about the farm laws, but we know that there are a huge number of landless laborers that are part of the agrarian crisis. Uh, the issue of building around that was not there. Uh, the issues of suicide, the farmers were committing suicide every day. Day and it is a kind of a long history that farmers are are uh, into the crisis or the crisis of corporate debt or the lack of education or the lack of non-agricultural job for the agrarian community. Those were the kind of a grounded issues that were there at that part of time. But you will find that the the larger concern of the agrarian movement was mainly about the the, the popular uh, farm law and not on the what they call the grounded core issues that were always there and visible uh, in, a, in a kind of brighter sense. But the, the kind of neglect of that issues suggested somewhere uh, that, <coughs> uh, that uh, um, uh, the, the movement is mainly, uh, mainly concerned about something which is popular and, and electorally, uh, electorally somewhere, somewhere significant. Uh, and therefore, Kule becomes so important in today's context that uh, he, uh, when he was writing Shetkara Tasul, uh, uh, the idea was, of course, to understand the, the what they called the gravity and the, the, the precarity of that particular condition. The, the condition of the farmers are pic the precarious. The idea which now people are using, the, the, the suggestion that the Shudra community is close to the idea of slavery, Gulamgi, this idea that uh, uh, and why is the is the hallmark of of the farming communities because it's thought that they do not have the kind of a what you call consciousness to understand their own conditions. Okay? And why they do not have the, the idea about their own terrible conditions because for a bigger centuries uh, they were denied the minimum accessibility to education that they are not uh, uh, not have the rights to educate, and without that 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 uh, possibility, without having education, uh, it was the, the condition they never understood and keep on living in a depressing and a terrible situation. So the the link between education, consciousness, and the possibility to bring change, that idea uh, 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 in, in both the writing Bulamgiri or in in Shetkara Tasul, will find that he was he was emphatically bringing that particular point that the society is is, is uh, hegemonized, like, like Gramscian term, that uh, so, so, uh, the society is hegemonized by the Brahminical values, superstitions, dogmas, and the kind of authority of the priestly class. This was the reason because of which the, the what they call the farming community, the, the Shudras, Shudras are unable to understand the, the gravity of their, uh, their precarity and therefore uh, it is impossible to, 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 to challenge or go against the system. Uh, he also somewhere suggested that the, the, the Shudra and the woman both have a similar uh, uh, status or, uh, or location in the current society that women and the Shudras are almost same way because both are denied the, the rights to education. Uh, and they were thought, so they were suggested that the, the larger meaning of life uh, will, uh, the larger meaning of life can only be derived by, survi by surviving in the current status quo and also serving the, what you call the dominant social elites, mainly the dominant elites. And therefore, uh, education uh, was crucial. And uh, you'll also find that uh, uh, probably he was not only thinking about writing a theoretical thought about uh, the conditions of the marginalized and the depressed people, but it, you'll also find that he was more than uh, building an idea. He was, he was, he was thinking about executing the plan. And this is what is different from most of the other thinkers that were there at that part of time. And when it comes to execution, for that matter, when he suggested that in, in, in 1927, the 1827, that the barbers will refuse to shave the heads of the Brahmin widows, this idea. So it was also somewhere suggested that probably the first 
first working class strike in India. That before that, if you think about organizing a working class, mainly the informal labor, uh, and suggesting that you have a right and, and respect in society, and you can utilize that to bring social change. That idea. Uh, and therefore, you'll find that when he suggested that the barbers should refuse to shave the heads of the Brahmin widows, that was a kind of a challenge to the authority, suggesting that it is not just the idea for woman's emancipation, but somebody has to execute a plan to do the same. Or for that matter, opening an ashram for uh, for the women who are uh, who are uh, who are kind of left away by the the, the given family. Uh, so vis-a-vis -vis the the women's question, mainly vis-a-vis -vis the mainly the Brahmin women's question, you'll find that uh, the, the care and the, the concern uh, was, was tremendously high and the idea that uh, the way uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the agrarian communities are dominated by superstitions and Brahminical rituals, the woman is dominated by what they call the patriarchal, uh, Brahminical patriarchy and later on of course many many people utilize that particular term. Uh, so you will find that what uh, that apart from thinking about the agrarian communities, he was also supplementing it with another social ills which are extremely visible and draconian or problematic at that part of time. Uh, and of course, another very very important issue is why which probably need extreme courage: the issues of the untouchable children. That uh, more than anybody else, the, the need of education is mainly with the what they call the untouchable. Uh, so-called attachable uh, kids and opening schools for those kids. That was something extraordinary to think at that part of time. Why? Because if you even imagine the Pune of that period when uh, Pune was basically uh, 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 building these ideas and executing these ideas, Pune was dominated or controlled by what they call the, the Peshwa rulers. And the Peshwa, the idea of Peshwa that he uh, kind of uh, graphically present in both of his both the books. Uh, Gulamgiri or in in uh, uh, Nishat Sur, will find that it was a kind of a coercive, terrible state. It was a state where people will not only deny human rights, but were also treated as worse than the slave. That kind of a condition, and therefore, in that condition, taking a courage to deal with something which was extraordinarily uh, not available to available in any resource, mainly thinking about the marginalized community. Attachables, women, and the agrarian castes. Uh, these three communities were in deplorable state, destitute, and what we call uh, having no notion of emancipation. That how to emancipate this, this uh, uh, emancipated from the, the, the clutches of the Brahminical authority. Uh, so Fule was making a bigger claim. Uh, he was suggesting that for a social revolution, uh, it is not just the emancipation of one subsection is required, but it is a total revolution is required. And if that kind of a parallel uh, overlapping or interlinked association with the uh, marginalized and uh, the oppressed communities, a larger sense of revolution or justice can prevail. And probably in today's time, uh, and this is the, the kind of a claim I suggest, that in today's time, this interlinkages is missing. Uh, whether it is those parties which, which often vouch for uh, the social justice uh, merit, uh, or liberal or the left parties, this interlinkage is completely missing. Like for that matter, uh, absence of a strong feminist struggle for the for 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 kind of breaking the clutches of patriarchal domination, the absence of that in today's time, and probably no political party is trying to make a claim around that particular question that India needs a, a feminist discourse, India needs a, an argument through, uh, for the, for the, for the call, for the liberation of the women. Uh, and therefore, uh, 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 probably uh, the, the failure, the failure of the opposition is mainly based on uh, the, the fa failure of linking uh, the oppressed communities with each other. Uh, and making a, some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of a alliance, like what uh, the, the idea of something called shudra the shudra, the dalit bahujan, the idea in today's any kind of a uh, 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 new definition that we come up with. But this sense that there is a possibility of shudra the shudra alliance, and that that alliance will be so huge and powerful, almost like Marx. Uh, uh, proletarian revolution 
where uh, the, the majority will, 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 will have that kind of a consciousness to torment the, the capitalist order, similar, almost to, uh, uh, in the similar, probably the contemporary to Marx, uh, he was also thinking on the same line with a kind of indigenous uh, awareness of our the Indian condition. That in India, the oppressed are divided between caste and communities. Those caste and communities, if they come together and form a better alliance, that alliance will be so huge and powerful and revolutionary that it can torment or challenge what they call the Brahminical social hegemony. Uh, and through that, the possibility of a revolutionary time. Uh, and therefore, uh, these ideas are almost forgotten in the today's context that somewhere uh, the, the need of what you call alliances between the oppressed communities. Uh, as I said that uh, the SP and VSP who claim to represent the worst of groups in India uh, decided not to contest together the political battle. And, so, and, and, and the reasons for that, maybe political reasons, but you know that somewhere they are not witnessing what has happened in the past, witnessing in the history, uh, that today somewhere suggested that for a better revolutionary project, the alliance, the, the combina combination, the, uh, the fraternity, the cordiality between the two groups is extremely important. And that has been forgotten in the current time. And therefore, probably, uh, it is not just what they call the education which lacks today. Fully, of course, contested and struggled for primarily basic education, Probably today that is not the major concern. Education is of course freely available to most of us, but probably he was mainly thinking about knowledge and consciousness. Uh, the, the absence, the education is there, but probably the idea of knowledge and consciousness is absent. Uh, even you have a rational knowledge about your own uh, betterment, uh, there is some kind of a rationality that runs in our mind that this is better to do uh, in, in life. But the idea of what they call social consciousness, which is not just a rational idea, but an idea of what you call ethics. Uh, so these linkages between education, knowledge, consciousness, and ethics, okay, uh, this is somewhere missing. We are educated, fine. We know that what is good for a political party, for a family, for a class, for a community, but the possibility consciously, the conscious possibility to, to utilize that knowledge for, a, for a building a larger social consciousness, that capacity and that imagination is probably missing. And therefore, uh, that, that missing is also suggests the absence of what you call an ethical political order. What ethics that you have, what are the ethical uh, possibilities that one is thinking when they are thinking about politics. Uh, and probably, therefore, the, the what we call the missing out of a creating a better human society, the idea of an emancipatory, liber uh, free or a libertarian space for for uh, for everyone. Uh, so somewhere, the imagination, the higher imagination, the ideal goals that Fulis Bali Raja, uh, the the idea that he will come and and make uh, make a society full of happiness, prosperity, and equality, that, that larger ideals are simply absent. Why? Because there is no concern for larger social ethics, and there is no idea of what is called uh, political consciousness, and we are mainly comfortable in education and probably a knowledge-driven society. Uh, beyond that, I think reading uh, fully is crucial. Uh, that we have forgotten, and I'm extremely thankful uh, to UDSF that they, they decided to have a uh, a session on Fuller's work, uh, and uh, probably these are the thoughts that I have to give you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, uh, sir. is talking about allies and uh, coordination between the Sudras and Adi Sudras. Uh, I I read one article on Fulez, uh, when uh, he was talking about the Sudra and Ati Sudra, like marginalized yeah, communities, they the used to live earlier together. But see, but I see the Fulez was the first, uh, first historian who was talking about the how but Bahamas, like so uh, uh, Brahmin, uh, Brahmin people are trying to differentiate between the Sudra and Ati Sudra's community by uh, imposing different laws. Like, in current scenario, we can see the, the like OBC uh, are uh, doing lots of atrocities on SA and ST community. Uh, we are like in that like 
but fule was the man who was trying to make uh, uh, who was creating awareness between the shudra and ati shudra like you uh, you two people are like belong to same varna but in in seven century we see there is a like uh, uh, emergence of uh, fifth varna uh, which is outside of varna system like we know that there are four varna so we see the creation of ati shudra uh, varna in seven century but uh, and after that there is no one